Hello and welcome to the virtual towers of Binary Arcadia, where the game's gone long into the night. So in today's video, we are going to give you an introduction into an upcoming project we have on the cards, which is essentially going to be making a Bartop arcade cabinet. Um, so Rich, do you want to tell us a little bit about it? So uh, as Tells mentioned, it's going to be bar top, so it'll be stand it on your coffee table, stand it on your dining room table, uh, so it will be short I mean, statue to a floor standing one. We're going to split the project into two. I'm going to take the woodwork aspect and the more mechanical side of the project, and Tabs is going to take the more electronic side of the, of the project, so I'll let him talk to you about that. But just a brief uh, interlude about the, the carcass, shall we call it. We're going to make it out of plastic coated uh, plywood, which has got is in black, which has almost got like a textured finish to it. Uh, and I'll router the parts out um, and and glue them all together, I guess. Uh, and obviously route all the relevant holes for all the pieces of kit that needs to go inside it. Um, we want to go quite a classic look. Yeah, quite, exactly. Um, you know, not too in your face, not too. No real big designs over no, it. No. Let the kind of natural look of it yeah, speak for itself. Uh, it's going to be in my house, so I don't want it to be covered in like arcade posters and stuff that won't necessarily fit in with the decor. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, and then we've got a few bits to talk about. Uh, if you want to talk a little bit about some about of the innards, maybe. Yeah, yeah, go yeah. for it. Yeah, so we're going to base this on the new, newly released Raspberry Pi 4. I think it's called the 4B. Yes. This is four gigabyte RAM model, so top whack. Um, we just wanted to make sure that we've got plenty of uh, leeway for emulating, well, hopefully up to the N64, possibly even a few Dreamcast games on there if we're lucky. But essentially we've got the, the Pi 4, we've got the PSU or the power supply unit. Uh, we've got the uh, micro SD card, which is 32 gigabytes, fastest one we could find. And then we've got a case here with an inbuilt fan because we have heard that the Pi 4 is having some issues with heat control. And specifically as well, if we decide to perhaps overclock it or we want to reach up to the likes of the Dreamcast, you know, heat dissipation is very important for it. Um, and then, yeah, Rich, do you want to tell us so about... a little bit about the, the sort of the, uh, the actual machine itself. Um, we're going to go for a 19 inch monitor and this will be a 4 by 3 which I'd say is a little bit hard to get hold of nowadays. It's going to have to be second hand uh, which is fine, I don't think that's a problem but just 4 by 3 monitors are a little bit few and far between these, these days. Everything's widescreen nowadays so um, yeah we're hoping to have uh, some sort of emblem at the top. We're hoping maybe a bar, bar BA logo. Um, and maybe that as an on-off switch, we, we'll see on that, we don't know. We'd like a light-up marquee, they call these, so that would look really cool. Um, and just a word on the screen, I mean, purists like CRTs for arcades because of the flicker, because it represents the true arcade experience. However, you know, we just, we think it's a good compromise with, yeah. a, with an LCD yeah. because it's light, it's more compact. We don't want to have this big thing you can't lug around. Yeah, exactly. Because you know? yeah. it will get moved around. That's why it's specifically why it's a bar top and not floor standing because it's likely to be got out when people are around or whatever or when I want a game on it or whatever, you know. So that's another reason behind that. Two player um, with joysticks and buttons, some buttons at the bottom for on off, reset, etc., start. We've got an HDMI here that we're hoping we can take direct feed footage from it because one of our lovely subscribers, Gareth, yep. um, suggested we do a Games Master-esque uh, tournament on the bar top once it's completed and we love that idea. Yeah, yeah. So we're hoping to get some direct feed footage from that and put something together, a bit of a tongue-in-cheek send up to <laughs> yeah, Games yeah. Master, yeah. which we loved as kids. Definitely. We're gonna have some handles on the side, like flip up handles so that you can easily grab it, move it around. I'm hoping that we can do this, a little bit of a, a project for me more than anything I guess. Uh, we're hoping that, because we're going to aim for four player uh, and use a PS3 uh, DualShock, controllers. DualShock controllers and we're hoping, I'm hoping that I can, with the use of a linear actuator and a sprung flap, uh, I can have a button on the front which literally uh, engages the linear actuator which pushes on the flap, opens the flap, and then four controllers will appear out of the top of the machine, all in a row, 
uh, that you can then grab and use. Which would be amazing yeah, if we can I achieve think, that. I think I can get that. I think it's going to take some playing around with, but I'm fairly confident I can make that work. We've never seen anything like that, so that would be the real kind of star piece of it if we could manage it. Yeah, I think that would be standout. You know, you press the button, the controllers appear through the top. It's almost like a grandiose moment. So I think that's quite cool. Mm. And then potentially a stretch goal to have a one arm bandit on it, maybe to turn it on. And this is based on our channel and our sign off, which is stamps and completed. Yeah, yeah. We'd like to have that. It's going to be difficult to engineer, but definitely, it would be nice if we could. Definitely. All right, are we moving on. Are we ripping off? Yes, we should rip off because of the microphone. <laughs> right, and then just to get into the final details of what we're aiming for here. We've got primary objectives that we have to attain to, secondary objectives which we're hoping to do, and then some stretch goals, which could if, be a bit dreamland. Time, but... time and money, basically. If we have enough time and money, we'll get to the stretch goals. So, talk through the primary objectives tabs. So, yeah, obviously, what we've said, we're just looking to make a bar top arcade cabinet uh, branded for the channel and for Rich's house. Mainly, Rich has quite a lot of guests around on occasion, yeah, so yeah. it's gonna focus on games that are multiplayer based and arcade get games but we're going all the way back to stuff like the atari yeah. and all the way up hopefully to n64 dreamcast definitely but we're thinking to keep it around the 300 ish games mark but i think that's a very loose short list yeah yeah point. it might be more might be less we'll have to see on that see, uh, see how labor intensive it is actually getting hold of the games and, and get them on the roms etc uh, two player built in, as we sort of said, with the two player joysticks and then inbuilt joysticks. Uh, and then obviously, we're hoping for the four player, but we've put that down as a secondary objective. But I'm hoping, even if we can't make it uh, with the linear actuator, I'm, I'm hoping we've got to go four player. Yeah, we can just put them in the back. Yeah, if can't we can't, we? if we can't get to that, then I think definitely they'll be in there. The main reason being that we just love to get GoldenEye playable on yeah. it because it's such a legendary four player game. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the issues we're going to have is the DualShocks being connected via Bluetooth. Also the controller mapping because GoldenEye obviously use the C sticks on the N64 controller and how we're going to map that to a dual analog stick controller is going to be interesting. <laughs> uh, and furthermore, we just don't really know how the Pi 4 is going to cope with four player GoldenEye in terms of frame rate. So there's a number of issues yeah. there, but it's going to be cool, you know, exploring and hopefully overcoming some Definitely. of those obstacles. Uh, yeah, and ob obviously we're onto secondary objectives now, but a light lighter marquee, uh, with the BA logo as the on-off button, I'm really hoping we can stretch that. I think the light at marquee should be doable. Yeah, that's definitely. It's the logo. I think the logo just as an on-off switch is fairly. I think we can. I can do that fairly easily. It's whether I can make the BA logo light up as well as be the on-off switch. I'm hoping I can, but there's a fair bit of uh, moving parts, shall we say, in that to to make, get right and stuff. So. That's why that's in a secondary objective. I think we can definitely do it as an on-off switch, but as a light-up on-off switch, yeah, we'll we'll see on that one. There we go. Uh, and then, as as we've said, we're hoping the, the the four PS3 controllers will be in a charging dock. So when they're in there, they're charging, and that they come out from the back. And again, we'll have to see how we get on with that one. And then we've got Dreamland stretch goals. So we've already mentioned the one-arm bandit mechanism, stamped and completed. It will look cool. Definitely. Whether in practicality though, this big thing on the side of it would be a bit annoying. Yeah, well, um, I guess we'll have to play with it. In that sense, we'll have to get hold of, if we can get hold of one a and, salvage. And, and, and see see how it looks on the side. If it looks daft, yeah. then maybe we don't bother. But One from like a scrapyard or maybe eBay yeah, or a salvage Yeah, exactly, place. yeah. And then finally, we would love to make it light gun enabled. I'm really hopeful of this because I want to play House of the Dead on it. That's Time something. Crisis, yeah, it's something that we played a lot when we went in the arcades. That was like the go to machine, oh, wasn't it? it? Oh, it's brilliant, wasn't it? So, yeah, two player light gun games oh, brilliant. would yeah. be amazing. But the, it, I don't think you're probably just going to say that this. Well, the technology behind yeah, it, so it's it would mean we've looked at a couple of ways of doing it. The cheaper way is a Wiimote solution. So having a sensor bar set up, yeah. having a Wiimote, which we'd take the innards out of, try and maybe 3D print a light gun yeah. based on the old kind of Namco mm. style. Yeah, yeah. Or, to be fair, it is possible that there are peripherals available for the Wii yeah. that is a light gun shaped anyway. So it might yeah. be we can do it like That'd that. We'll, again, we'll have to see on that. Mm. 
but that does pose an, on, although to be fair the Wii remotes are, are battery on as in you know double A batteries mm -hmm. so that doesn't need any charging port on it does it so that's no. fine okay and they won't be used probably as much as the other stuff so that's fine as yeah, true, battery, yeah. battery yeah. change cool so yeah that so, that, so that's the project look I mean we're, we're hoping every couple of weeks maybe a little update on the project what we've managed to do uh, it's literally in its infancy at the minute so there's not going to be anything for a few weeks we've just started to collect some of the ingredients for it should we say and we're still waiting for the software to catch up on the pi 4 because it's so new so that is already gonna be an obstacle yeah, we're just exactly. gonna have to wait and see on that and we're hoping that we can get this done in i don't know three months maybe yeah, sort of thing and, nice. and and because we uh obviously we i don't know some of you may know we live miles away from each other by splitting the projects up like we have it means we can each get on with our own bits and then all old weekends when we're together we can bring them together mm. obviously there'll be a lot of collaboration on that what do you think about this what do you think about this but generally we're going to two side projects that will you know come Meet together in the middle, at the end yeah basically but i suppose just to kind of we'd like to say it's a how-to video but certainly this is a first for us yeah so it's more going to be an explore you know, yeah, along, come along for the ride with us and we'll see where we go wrong, what the biggest challenges were. Yeah, and I think that that's probably what most of the updates are gonna be. Here's what we've managed to do. We did this, this, and this. These are the challenges we faced. This is how we overcome them, or not, as the case may be. And then, yeah, so that's something to look out for in the next few months from us. And hopefully we can inspire a few people out there, our subscribers or otherwise, to maybe give a project like this a go because Definitely. it is a great way to keep old games alive make sure they don't get lost forever in the archives and you know just a, a project to do together and celebrate games. And, and the, only, the, the only thing I will say we've chosen to make the the casing ourselves uh, I've noticed a lot with the research we've been doing for this project you can just buy the they, they are available from There's kits isn't yeah quite a lot of sources you can just buy the bits screw them together glue them together whatever we've decided to sort of go away from that so we can have more of a unique design that's what we want so I guess in that sense we've sort of made a bit more work for ourselves but if you do choose to do it yourself that's that's a little simplifier to it's very scalable isn't it yeah exactly yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so brilliant cool well that's that's it that's the intro video done yeah so if you like the video give us a like or if you like any more information about what we're doing what we're thinking give us a comment and we'll get back to you on that as always if you didn't like the video give us a dislike feedback is always welcome and I think that's probably about it. Another one for the archives. Stunt to complete it.